And there we are. Welcome, guys, again to another episode. This is episode 8 of the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast. Of course, with me, Lethal Coils, you've got my man, Matt Sinister, my homegirl, Chaos Pixie. Hello. And our boy, Sam, the Vaping Bogan. How are you, bro? I'm good, man. And you? I am dandy today. Uh, Matt, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, Started the day off by watching Zack Snyder's Justice League. Ooh, how'd that so go? So good, so good. Um, then I uh, went to the gym and trained, and uh, now I'm back and here to chill with you guys. Sick. Sam, uh, I said this in private, but I'll say it here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Not a problem at all. Thanks for having me on. And Pixie, what about you? How's your uh, How's your week gone? How's your day gone? Still alive. Still alive. <laughs> That chalk that one up to the uh, scoreboard, right? Uh, absolutely. We have um, we have a horse that two months ago came out of a field, and she is very big, particularly considering she's only eighteen months old. Now, when you say she came out of a field, <clears throat> like literally, they <laughs> as soon as she was weaned off a of mom at six months old, she was put in a field with a bunch of other babies, and for the last year, they have spent time running wild. Oh. So literally out of the field. So she's a real wild horse. Essentially feral. <laughs> oh my. Um, we've only had her for about a month and a half, two months, and she got her feet done for the first time today. And I do have to say, I have yet to find a more sensible baby. Really? Because she is massive. Like She wasn't spooked or anything by... She was a little squidgy. A little squidgy. A little, little bit of sidestepping, a little bit of trying to pull her feet away. But the, thankfully, it was the assistant, the farrier's assistant, that was in there with me. And um, between her being quiet and calm and me being quiet and calm, like, I, 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 things could have gone really, really bad today. <laughs> and they went really, really well. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm glad you didn't get uh, kicked or hurt in any way, shape, or form. I know that's uh, sometimes a risk you take, especially when you work with horses like that. Uh, Sam... How has your week been, bro? It's been all right. It's, uh, I had a little little sick day in the middle of it, which kind of sucked. A little bit fluey. Not the coronavirus, don't worry. We don't have that here in Australia, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, uh, anywhere today else you've got to be careful. Yeah, you anywhere sneeze, else all of a sudden, <laughs> corona, corona. Yeah, well, it was like, you know, kind of fevery and achy. I was like, oh, if I was in the UK, I'd have to go and get a test. But, you know, it seemed to pass after a day, and so I'm kind of back on my feet now, but... Uh, yeah, I lost a day there, but apart from that, it was my wife's birthday on Tuesday, so we had uh, some friends around, a little barbecue, which was nice. And, oh. um, yeah, it's been it's been a pretty good, apart from the sick day, it's been a pretty good week. Well, give the uh, the missus our love and a happy birthday. Yeah. Shout out oh. to Mrs. Bogan. Shout out to Mrs. Bogan, that's right. Happy birthday, Mrs. Bogan. Um, yeah, so why don't we go ahead and kick off with our buffets. Let's give it to the guest. Uh, what have I got? Well, I, uh, you know, I fell down the billet box rabbit hole a little while ago, so I have uh, three billet boxes going. I have uh, one with the new Mission Linked going, which I love. Uh, I have another one with the Mission Bridged going, uh, and I have another one with the uh, Vape Snail, which I'm really liking as well. Mm. Uh, then I have the new QP Design, uh, what are they called? It's the Juggernaut uh, M- The MR? MR? Mm. Yeah, the little single coil. That's uh, that's real nice. Uh, I have the what is it? The the Haku Venner, I think it is. The little RDA from Haku. I think it's the Venner. Yeah, the Venner. I have that sitting atop Toro mod. Uh, it's a Spanish Altum little single eighteen six fifty squonker. It's a nice little setup. Um, and I'm also testing this one here, which has got one of my favorite names of a vape device this year. The Smort, the Smort coil from uh, <laughs> SMRT. Uh, Smort coil from Matofo, a little rebuildable mesh coil, uh, which is an interesting kind of mm. design. It, it's rebuildable in the sense that it, it's like a traditional mesh sub ohm tank. You kind of slide the cotton into a little sheath, and yeah, it looks like your normal. You know, pre-made mesh coil, but you do it yourself. So that's uh, that's going nicely so you, as well. You could honestly rebuild that like you would like on a profile, then. 
No, not like a profile, because like the profile has like a little fat chunk of mesh that you then kind of put mesh over, like fat chunk of cotton with a bit of mesh that you wrap over it and clamp it onto the what deck, is yeah. kind of like a normal RBA deck. Whereas this is is like a, a pre-made coil that would go in a sub tank, but okay. you break it down and you wrap the cotton you know, around the mesh and then slide it back into a sheath and then put it into, you know, like wow. a, a sub tank kind of thing. So it's like, yeah, it's like when people hack, when they used to hack old sub tank coils and rebuild them. Okay. Kind of like that. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds RBA like when I used of... to take them apart. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to wait and, and like see. You have the little, the little rubber grommet, and you have one lead going one way and one lead going the other. Yep. And then you have to like put the little rubber grommet in, and the little metal thing. Oh, no, that's it. weird. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's actually pretty easy to do the way that they give you this little kit to do it. I was, in, I was impressed the way they did it. So for people that like, you know, the way a sub-tank coil, you know, vapes. Absolutely. That's sort of the way you do it. It's, I just like the name of it. It's smart. It's the smart coil. <laughs> smart. <laughs> smart from Orc. I'm an smart. old Simpsons fan, so I thought it was funny. SMRT. I mean, SMRT. <laughs> oh, man. How about you, Matt? What are you vaping on? Um, I got a little buffet going this week. Uh, I got, uh, you know, which is pretty much a staple in my buffet, the uh, Turk V2 um, with on top of the clutch. Got some Boule Bolu on the inside. Uh, then, of course, you know, I always take a sub ohm tank uh, when I go out. Um, so I got the Vapor SO Gen uh, with the trough, uh, Wismec trough uh, tank on top. And I finally was able to, I've been steeping these for quite some time. This is a liquid not a lot of people know about. It's called uh, Candy Mountain Lifesaver Gummy. It's by this company, Blue Monkey Vapes. Hmm. Um, it's one of my favorite e-liquids. Then, uh, in honor of our uh, guest, I have uh, 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 TM24 on top of the Odin. Ooh. Oh, nice. And some pumpkin AF on the inside. And then the RDA for Vapen with the uh, Odin Mini. Oh, the uh, RDA And got Vapen. some uh, Hogut Yogut's Basic Bitch that... Uh, uh, pipe uh, pumpkin spice cheesecake on the inside and uh, yeah that's what I got going right now beautiful I am gonna go last I'm gonna give it to the wonderful chaos pixie I know it's the same <laughs> as always I don't expect a change here but go ahead and what are you vaping on tonight pixie I am running the girly rig I've got the purple dreamer with the breast cancer pink Asgard mini on top Still running for the last month the same set of 0.09s with um, a DIY tropical fruit that I made up like three or four weeks ago that's just been sitting on my shelf and I shook it and went to vape it today and it's freaking delicious. Awesome. Awesome. I don't even remember what flavors are in it, but there's coconut and pineapple and, and Lord knows what else in there. I literally just started you know, squirting it in. I always dig it when... <laughs> Somebody who's not into DIY starts to try and mix, and then they find that one that they really, really like. I, I'm <clears> digging that. That's up on the shelf. That's that Betty clone. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to try that marshmallow. Every time I try it, uh, every time I knuckle test it, it just gets better and better. Now, what's the flavor profile on Betty? Betty is a mixed fruit, but the fruit flavor changes based on the wattage that you're vaping it at. So for me personally... When I vape it in a sub ohm at like 60 to 70 watts, it's very heavy on like the strawberry. Mm -hmm. But the higher I go, the more I get like a raspberry blueberry tang to it. Right. Oh, it's so good. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like a pearlescent paint of e-liquid. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> it's, and I didn't realize it, but it, it's based off of like a fruit mix. It's literally like a two item vape. It's the fruit flavor mix. And a sweetener. Now, the first one I use super sweet. That one I use marshmallow because somebody said marshmallow would sweeten it just as much and be better. And they were absolutely freaking right. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it takes. You know, you'd think super sweetener just to make it sweet because it's in the name sweet. But sometimes adding a little different of a flavor concentrate can, can do the same thing and enhance the flavor. I really dig that. I guess I should move on to myself. What am I vaping on today? Where am I going to start? Let's start with this. We've got the H Cigar 
Wild Wolf 235 with the red M Turk V2 on top there with nice black chop top. In that, we've got some 80 volt and Casadagas can only be mine, strawberry cannoli. And uh, I always liked that line. I really dig the cannoli line. Oh, the from... cannoli line? Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. I'm not like a big dessert vapor, but they did that. Uh, there's like cannoli be nuts, I think. Cannoli be nuts? Cannoli be one. Yep. Cannoli be one was the original. I liked one of them. They were really popular when I was working in the vape shop. People My like favorite them. was the cannoli be reserve. That was the one with the chocolate chips on it. Yeah. That was that one. Um, next up, we've got the limited edition Smoked Out Acrylic Saga with the Ardent on top there. Uh, in that, we've got some Pastelillos de Guayaba from Saboris del Encanto. This is the Guava Flaky Pastry. That's the uh, fogging out with the Batman line there. And uh, I, I've always dug that. Uh, and this is actually probably my fourth bottle since I have ever tried it and I'm digging it uh, lastly but not leastly we've got the big green beast from the east laugh now cry later DNA 250 C4S lipo with the steam crave Titan on top uh, in that I'm actually running it's a DIY brought by a good friend of mine he made up some strawberry toasty jam which is a kind of a clone of strawberry jam monster but better better <laughs> just better in every way. Um, and that's what I'm vaping on tonight. So, I suppose we should get to our, our show here. Um, me, my week. I didn't go over my week, I guess. So, what's been going on with me this week? A lot has been changing. Uh, I, a lot of people out there know that I've been on this, this life path where there's a lot of things I need to change um, physically about my life, mentally about my life. And um, just pushing forward to be a better person in general. Um, I think that there's a lot of things about myself that I could change to interact with people a little bit easier. And uh, especially here at home with the wife and the daughter. Uh, so things have been going really well. A lot of people know also that I, I've stopped using THC and cannabis products. Uh, today is day 12 of that. And... Um, I, I must admit, I did have a little slip up last night, had a couple of beers, and we make piss poor decisions when we drink. So I did have a couple of hits last night, but we're back on the train today, and we're, we're going strong. So um, that's where we're at there. Had um, had a nice meeting today, though, with, with my mother and my father, uh, my mom and dad, and uh, we went out to lunch to a, an authentic Mexican restaurant, and... Uh, that was really good. The food was great. Uh, but the thing that, that really uh, excited me the most is that in my family, we have our great uncle Frederick, who was a uh, U.S. military uh, private first class in the 989th Field Artillery Battalion. And he was one of the uh, infantry that went across all France and Europe. And uh, we actually have right here... We have his journal from his entire travels. It's got his letters from Franklin Roosevelt. He's got his Dwight Eisenhower letters in here. Uh, the entire journey has been documented, and it's just crazy. I love this book. Uh, I've loved it for years. When I was in college, when I was in college, I actually brought it to my world civilization class, um, and. I showed my professor, and he was amped up about it and used that as part of one of my uh, assignments. So, um, But I've been in love with that, and my parents passed that off to me today uh, to keep and maintain in its condition. So uh, I'm really excited about that. I'm digging it, me and the, the wife. We have plans because she's a, a little bit of a history nut too, When especially when it comes to things like this. You don't really see books like this every day. So we're really excited no. to sit down and really get into it and read some of the, the entries that he's put in there and just see what it was like. Yeah, speaking of, speaking of uh, family, uh, Lethal, um, as you know, I went to uh, uh, Las Vegas last yes, uh, Saturday that's right. to uh, have my father's celebration of life and scatter his ashes. Absolutely. Um, I was gifted his, uh, 
1967, take a look at it here, uh, 1967 USC National Championship ring. Um, Dang, man. That is really that? cool. That is really cool. Um, he wore this on his finger <clears throat> since, since he won it. Wow. And uh, it was the one thing I wanted of his. Uh, and, you know, that was an agreement he and I had that I would be given the ring. And, you know, my family honored it. And, uh, you know, I wore the ring when uh, I gave the eulogy, which was not easy to get through. No. Yeah. Um, but it was nice. We had a lot of family and friends all come together. Um, we stayed at the uh, we, we stayed at the stratosphere. We had a uh, we had a nice room booked. Um, the only thing about the stratosphere is that it smells like Willie Nelson's bus everywhere you go. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you walk out of your room in a non, you know, I had to get a, uh, I originally had a smoking room booked so we could vape in the room, but then uh, they didn't have one that was conjoined, so for the room for the kids. So I wound up having to uh, upgrade to a, uh, a non-smoking room so the kids, so we could have a room, you know, connected. Um, but you walk out your uh, room in the morning and it, that'll wake you up in the morning, boy. Yeah, it just it was just <laughs> or put you back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, make you I really barely, hungry. I, I barely had to uh, 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 have some shed time out there because I was constantly in a contact high everywhere I went. But uh, oh. yeah, it was uh, it was really nice. Uh, did drop about two hundred and forty bucks in the casinos, but oh, uh, you didn't power bomb got, the machines, right? No, I didn't power bomb the machine. Uh, I uh, got my stimulus check on Friday night while I was in Vegas. <laughs> oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> so it could have gone a lot worse. I had already already planned on gambling 100, and uh, so then I just gambled another 140 more. Technically 180 because I gave some money to my girlfriend, but, um, mm. you know, because she's sitting there going, I don't, I, I don't have any cash on me. I don't have any cash on me. I'm like, here you go. Man. Here you go. Man. Um, Look at you being all and, super cute and sweet. Yeah, and uh, I mostly played penny slots. You know, sat there and just you could sit there with uh, on a, especially when you sit at the bar, and sit at a penny slot, and just pay it the minimum over and over again for hours, and then they'll feed you drinks. Oh, jeez. You know, so. Yeah, I don't but, know anything uh, about. Yeah, it was uh, it was a good time. Don't know nothing about casinos. I've never actually spent any good amount of time except for Mohegan Sun at NBE 2019. Uh, that was about it, and I never actually stepped inside of any of the gambling areas, any of the actual casino areas. It was pretty much just at the function hall, and uh, that was a that was it, really. Um, I think we got things there were so expensive though, absolutely too expensive. Like we you got one dinner. Expensive. I went to uh, they had a Starbucks inside the stratosphere. And uh, it was late. The, 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 the gift shop they had there was closed. And I needed water. And uh, the only thing that was open was Starbucks. So I went and I bought two bottles of water at Starbucks, a bag of chips, and one of those cheese and salami uh, packs. Right. $22. Gee. Oh. Damn. <laughs> $22. Holy cow. That was like... NBE at Mohegan. It was ridiculous. I went and I got... That chicken finger plate. Yeah, I got it? a chicken finger plate. They, they called it a plate, realistically. You know, those little cardboard things that they fit two hot dogs in? Like when you go to the beach. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those. <laughs> with a handful of french fries and three chicken fingers for twelve fifty. The soda was another three bucks. Mm-hmm. I think the hot dog was like $5.00. For a friggin it's crazy yeah. price. Vegas oh, is not Vegas is not cheap. Uh, I, we went to Denny's <clears throat> because it was the only place that didn't have a two-hour wait, and uh, sixty dollars for, for a family of four, two kids, two adults, sixty dollars. <laughs> wow! Holy cow, man! Well, last so, yesterday, as we all know, was St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day sure to both sure. of you guys. Um, and yeah, that was the event that, that was going on last night that I actually had a couple of beers. Uh, that was the Dropkick <laughs> Murphys live stream, which was pretty darn good. I was actually rocking out like I was at a show last night in our own bedroom. It was pretty crazy. 
I cannot even explain the type of fear that I had watching him, A, jump on the bed. <laughs> because we have a California king-size bed and seven-foot ceilings. He is 5'11". He stands on the bed, and he barely has two to three inches between his head and the ceiling. And all I could see in my head was him jumping, not ducking far enough to jump, and slamming right into a stud or putting a hole in the ceiling. And that's totally something I would have done, too. You're going to end up on that show, Ridiculousness. I've seen, I've seen oh. that. Oh, that. absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just go straight through the drive <laughs> Wind up like Dino and the Flintstones through the car. Yeah, right. Oh man. Uh, but yeah, that was a good show, man. Um, I actually, I had a couple of buddies. It was free, and uh, we wanted to watch it together in the Zoom room last night. So, yeah, I, I threw it on, and we uh, had a bunch of people in the Zoom, and we were streaming, and uh, we all just enjoyed the norm. it. You know, it has to be. It has to be. You know, I mean, you can't go out with your friends to go to shows you can't go anywhere in public you know so if they're going to do it live on on the internet and they're going to offer it free to people i mean like if it was a show that was online that i paid a ticket for or paid for a ticket to go see i wouldn't have streamed it because that's just not fair it was a free show i felt like it was acceptable to stream it for my they friends and everything have they started like announcing or booking shows for like later in the year? In the oh yeah, yes. outdoor stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, actually, we, one of the one of the first is going to be WrestleMania. They're going to be course. having uh, yeah. They're, they're going to be having uh, <laughs> they're going to be having like uh, uh, twenty five thousand or uh, I think they're trying to get it up to seventy five thousand, but I don't think they'll get that high. Uh, fans in attendance, so about a third of the building. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we got a couple know. of. Sort of local band festivals happening um, June, I think June and July. But they're just Australian artists. Uh, and then from I think October, the borders will be open again for international. So okay. the first international show they've announced I saw was Kiss. Kiss is doing their final tour mm. ever. <laughs> uh, they're finally going to hang up the boots. How many times have we heard that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They must be getting pretty old, though, now. Gene Simmons must be pushing at least that 70 mark, I reckon. Yeah. But all they're going to do is put two other guys in their makeup and just keep Kiss going. You well, know, you know, that's... See, that's... <laughs> and, and I thought about this, and I thought, you know, like, any other band that gets to that age of Kiss, you can kind of tell how old they are by that stage. You can, you can kind of see, oh, look, you know, yeah. they're getting pretty wrinkly, you know. But then I thought, with Kiss... You know, no one really can tell how fucking old they look because they're wearing that much makeup. <laughs> yeah, and all the, the you platform know, boots and the outfits. And, yeah. you know, I was... 1985 Kiss versus 2021 Kiss, probably not going to look a whole lot different from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I was not saying really. that to Lethal last night watching the Dropkick show. Like, I'm watching Al Barr, like, bounce around like a rabid jackrabbit. I'm like, holy shit. And then I realized... He's like 52 or 53 years old. He's been one of the lead singers of Dropkick Murphys since 1998. And he was already yeah, the, like... Is that the, short, is that the short skinny dude. Guy that's the skinny tall, little skinny guy. rail skinny guy. Uh, the short fat one is Ken. That's Ken Casey. Yeah. That's what I think, Ken Casey. Because the tall skinny guy, he's, he's rocking a hat like lethal always. Yeah. But Al, I mean, the dude's yeah, in his like in, early 50s. I mean, about 90, 96. 98 or something, didn't Yeah, it, it was 98, because they started in 96, and they had one singer for a year, they had a second singer for a year, and then Al yeah, came in, and he's yeah. been there ever since. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, no, there are some bands that have been around for a long time, and you could tell how old they are. Like, you go watch an Aerosmith concert, uh, and it's all the original guys, and they all look, you know, and, you know, I mean, Joe Perry still looks pretty good, but so many of them just look so old, but they can still perform amazingly. Steven Tyler yeah. still sounds like he did back in the 70s. Mm. It's like Descendants. The, you know, Milo sounds, when I saw them live only maybe three years ago, I reckon now, uh, you know, he looks like your girlfriend's dad. You know, he, he's wearing like a, like a pale blue bowling shirt and he just has like a pretty regular cut haircut. And, you know, he just, he just does, he looks like a regular dude. He was never about the, you know, the, the whole punk look or tattoos and shit. But if the dude jumps around on stage and yells and screams like he did in in the 90s. 
Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing. He, he sounds exactly the same. I was so impressed. They were better live than, uh, than fucking Misfits were. Really? Yeah. I haven't ever actually had a chance to see them. No, I saw Misfits with uh, uh, Only and uh, who else did they have? Maybe one of the original drummers, I think. Um, But no, not with Danzig. I would love to see them with with Danzig. Um, But yeah, they they were good, but, you know, Descendants were way better. And then I saw The Exploited the following week after uh, after the Misfits and the Exploited dude they fucking go hard and that dude really? old as fuck as well wow um, and they would they just fucking went wild they were because um, you know they play that super fast almost you know they, they kind of transformed into like almost a thrash punk mm. where it's, you know pretty fast and um and pretty yelly and yeah I was super impressed with the, the Exploited as well kind of like some Blood for Blood almost like a thrash punk kind of well, you listen to early um, Exploited, and it's very, like, 70s, 80s punk. You right. Know, sex and violence, sex and violence, sex and violence. <laughs> like, sex pi- sort of like sex pistols. And then you listen to their newer Ramones. stuff, and it's all like, fuck the system, and it's really, really fast. <laughs> um, and it's really, like, almost metally some of the uh, the chords they play, like thrash, power metal sort of stuff. All right. But um, still very punk. And, uh, yeah, they rocked out real hard. Impressive, again, for dudes that were probably pushing 60 yeah um, when they did that show well we do have some shows coming up actually one that i'm very very grateful i was able to pick up tickets to i was looking to pick up tickets to the corn show it's a virtual show but in real shows we actually have there's an entire line of tour dates set up already and i think they're starting in may um but it's lamb of god megadeth trivium and in flames and uh I was actually lucky enough to score meet and greet package for them, so uh, I'll be able That's to. Be fun. Yeah, I'll be able to hang out with In Flames for a little while during that show. Um, that's on July twentieth. Uh, as far as other shows, I know that there are some planned. When exactly they're going to start, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure as the venues here in Massachusetts have been opened up for capacity yet. I do know that, uh, like, a little earlier than they should have, I think, personally, Texas and Missouri, or Texas and Mississippi, rather, have opened up all of their concert venues to 100% capacity with no mask requirements. None. Uh, Yes. I, I see. I wouldn't go to that. I wouldn't go to <laughs> no, that. no, I, I wouldn't be going to any shows in, in Texas, not without a mask. A hundred percent capacity and, and and no mask. No, no, thank you. No, no, not. Uh, I mean, we get are going down. People vaccinated before we can start doing that, guys. Come on, yeah. come down. Apparently, we are at like what I heard yesterday. It was the number was seventy one point three million people have been vaccinated at least once already here in the U.S. Uh, Still not even. A, no, like a, <laughs> that's not, not a great well, big number. No. One of the problems we're going to wind up to here in the U.S. is uh, people that are refuse will refuse to get vaccinated, mm. oh, and yeah. and then they're going to want to go out in public and they're they're not going to wear masks. And this is one of the things that's del- that's that's caused the pandemic to spread like it has, is you know, you know, uh, spring break. You know, you got college students out there. Mm-hmm you know just you know pool parties all kinds of craziness going on it's like Absolutely. we're not out of the woods yet here we're getting there but we're not out of the woods yet this thing is real but mm-hmm. i mean we got a quarter of the population here in america that think it's all a conspiracy by bill gates to control us so i mean <laughs> you know, it's... yeah well, they get that information from that handheld gps device they have with uh, four microphones and three cameras in there yeah because <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't already have fucking control of you <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, they have all they have all their information on all their social media pages, but yeah, uh, yeah, they, like, they complain it's about privacy. It's just it's bizarre <laughs> to me how they think that there's a need for any more kind of tracking and tracing and controlling. It's like you got a fucking phone, dude. <laughs> I've been doing that for years. Yeah, right. Big Brother yeah, look, is if you're watching. Online, you don't have a lot of privacy. All right, no. no. Just, just, just. There's no, no. reason. Just live your life. All right. Just live yeah. your life. Seriously. Um, yeah, but shows are, like, so rare these days. 
Um, you know, I had five shows that I was going to go to uh, last year. Really? And they uh, all got canceled or postponed. And uh, I'm pretty sure one of them, uh, I'll never get the opportunity again, which is to see Ozzy Osbourne. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, I had uh, tickets to see uh, Stone Temple Pilots. I had tickets for Shinedown. I had uh, tickets for uh, the uh, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Joan Jett, Poison, this whole stadium tour they were going to do, this whole uh, take you back to the 1980s and 90s. Joan Jett uh, would have been awesome to see. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, that got that was the only show that got postponed, and I didn't get my so I still have the tickets for that, and I'm supposed to do it in September, but we'll see. Mm. Um, but I am looking for that. That's that's uh, you know, when it came to the pandemic, I was I wasn't too upset of just having to stay home because I like to stay home anyway. I, when I was wrestling, when I was wrestling and traveling around on the road, I saw plenty of things. You know, I, I did plenty of things. I just want to stay home now. I'll go to the store. I'll go to the gym. But the one thing I did like to still do was go to concerts. Mm. And that's when that got taken away. You know, even when I'm at home, I don't listen to just listen to music at home. I'll put YouTube on and look for a live concert. Right. Yeah. Cool. You know, absolutely. And we do have actually um, another event that has been been planned, scheduled and is on track to go through. Uh, coming up in June on the 12th and 13th of this year, 2021, Mohegan Sun is presenting NVE and the yeah, Hemp World that. Expo. They were going to do that in May. That was first announced for May, and then they pushed it back. Right. Well, it was first for March, then May. Now they pushed That's it right. to June. Because um, it was supposed to be the 17th and 18th, like it was la the 2019. It but was supposed to be March. How's that going to work with this, ba like, now that this vape mail band's come in? Um, so here's the thing, they, the casino is on an Indian reservation, which in a way they play by their own rules. They're not, oh, I'm sure they can do the event. What I was like thinking is how are they going to get stock in? Cause if, you know, you got a lot of those Chinese companies that come to those shows, Good point. You know, no Indican, import. Um, Aspire, and they have to send their stock in advance for the show sort of thing. Right. And if they can't ship in, because now DHL is saying we're not doing this shit. Right. How are they um, going to get it in? Well, the USPS ban still excludes business to business. So that is still a thing. Businesses will still okay. be able to get theirs. Person to, or business to person or uh, consumer, no. Um, so the companies will still be able to get their products, but uh, and they can bring them with them to the, the convention. Um, and How, you know, has anyone explored the idea of uh, shipping via USPS? You know, when they say business to business, because um, in Australia it's pretty easy to get what we call an ABN, an Australian business number. Ooh. You can get it for free. Okay. Go onto the, the ATO website, Australian Taxation website. You can register a business, mm -hmm. get an ABN number, and by that virtue, you are now a, a business. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't everybody who wants vape mail just get a business number and then your vape shops are shipping business to business? Because you can Which register as a number in. I'm assuming that you can register as a business for whatever, but after that you actually have to go for a tobacconist license, I'm assuming. Okay. And be that I don't know what the cost of that would be. Right, right. So not not everybody's gonna gonna go and get a tobacco license right. and then just get their regular vape mail. Right. Because then there's like a whole bunch more red tape that you'd have to go through. Uh, and we're, we're looking for the loopholes. Like I know there's a lot of uh, vape shops are going to do uh, special orders for their customers. You tell them uh, which uh, website to order from, and they'll have it uh, sent to their shop. And you know you have to it's probably going to hike the price up. Yep. You know it's you know it's probably uh, you're going to have to pay you know way in advance, but uh, you know you'll have a way to get your product. Um, I'm the people that uh, I, I'm talking to just to personally get uh, uh, products from are going to be shipping me uh, 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 battery uh, parts and uh, uh, beard oil. So uh, that's yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. That's what I uh, I'm 
you know, my coils, if anybody does order them from me, they're going out as either machine parts or metal wire jewelry. And that's it um, for me. I think the biggest toaster, thing... Toaster wire. It's toaster wire. Toaster, toaster wire. wire. I think the biggest thing is the company's got to take the, the word vape or vapor off their... Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to have to change their change their websites, change their... Yeah, you don't uh, want any identifying names. marks. And, you know, but if something says vapor on the package, then they're going to inspect it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. That's why, like, no identifying marks. Uh, nothing that can specifically identify vaping as being a part of that package. Um, mm. And that's going to be really where it's at. But, you know... That being said, black market's already there. I know we've been speaking about this for weeks, but you take a look on Instagram and like every third post, every fifth post, you're coming across like puff bars, you know, people selling them privately, uh, you know, no no shipping, free shipping, you know, by... Those people in New York that are dealing in flavored e-liquid um, mm. out of the boot of their car. They got burner phones like drug dealers. Have, yeah, right. And they're meeting in car parks at Walmart and selling people, you know, flavored e-liquid out of the boot of their car. Absolutely. I, I joked about it before, but you got this one guy coming out of this scummy alley with a fucking trench coat on. Hey, you need your e-liquid. You know, yeah. like you're selling watches e on New York City streets. And if you really, uh, if you really got some cash, I got menthol e-liquid too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, not just tobacco. We got everything. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. No, yeah, it's bubblegum crunch, baby. <laughs> <laughs> bubblegum crunch. Yeah, I got what you need. Nice. Oh, it's been some crazy. strawberry watermelon bubblegum. Here you go, man. Yeah, this the yeah. whole regulation thing is just it's out of hand. It's crazy. You I even in little baggies. <laughs> I can see it too. It would be funny to gimmick it like that if you're if you're a if you're a seller and you're selling out of the back yeah. of your car. You start putting things in little baggies and little. You do it just like, hey, you're calling yeah. me a drug dealer, so fuck it, I'm gonna right. act like a drug dealer. We're gonna we're gonna get those ten milliliter Nick shot bottles. You need a dime bag, you know. You got well, I mean, <laughs> like the spare parts. Are, your spare parts already come in little uh, little dime baggies anyway. <laughs> this is true. Very very true. And oh, I've man. used those dime. I've used those spare part dime baggies to transfer some other product that I was yeah. taking taking across state lines. Yeah. <laughs> now you have to wonder though, with the growth of the black market now because of all this regulation, when the government, you know, eventually they're gonna catch on. I mean, it's gonna happen, and uh, you have to think what kind of measures are they gonna go to then? You know. Well, the thing is, is the it's not the police's job to enforce this; it's the FDA's job. Yeah, you know, it, it's not the the police are not going to give a shit if you have a a bottle of e liquid. They're not going to want to even deal with the paperwork of mm -hmm. having it's not to criminalize. Yeah, none of, no, none it's of this not, it's is not, criminalized. It's all yeah. FDA regulations. Yeah, yes. right, right. But so, I'm just like, they can't. I can't fathom the FDA or the CDC saying anything about. USP FDA approved food grade products such as VG PG flavor concentrates because lube you know you can, you people that manufacture fucking lube like sex products mm -hmm. that's PG VG that's, mm -hmm. that's all it is uh, so you can't suddenly say that that's a, a controlled substance because that's going to fuck a whole bunch of other industries candy is made with you know thick yeah. using PG and stuff bakeries like that. soft drinks um, flavors on their own again they're all food based grade flavors all of these companies that, that make any kind of flavored food um, whether it be candy or cakes or whatever buy their, their, their flavors from the same companies that manufacture e-liquid so you, mm -hmm. can't, you can't ban the, the, the flavors themselves unless it's you know got nicotine in there it's right. pretty hard to say that that is 100% mm -hmm. for vaping. And that's the other thing. The other thing is nicotine. That that you need a tobacconist license to even obtain now. You know, in, in the States. You, you can't, you know, as a consumer, you can't order from a business and have it shipped to you. Like, we can up until a certain day. But, um, and that's, I think, the 28th, correct, Matt? Is that the 28th um, or the 26th? To order or to receive, yeah, because 
I think it starts on April 5th is the actual date that they will no longer ship okay. any uh, any any mail. But even then, it I, they don't have the manpower that it would this. take to in, to inspect these packages. Mm-mm. And I mean, you and you get somebody like our our good friend Will at uh, Steel Valley Vapors could just walk in with a package and say, "Yeah, these are dildo parts and lube." I want to send it, you know, <laughs> and no yeah. one's going to want to open that. <laughs> yeah, really, seriously, female intimacy products. Um, yes. I'm good. <laughs> I'm all set with opening that. Used just panties. Put, used, oh. used, just, just put secondhand butt plugs on there. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not no, no, I am not and, catching and the hepatitis truth is too, today. I don't think, I, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of people. The, 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 the USPS is going to be losing a lot of money mm. uh, with this, and they're going to know how fucking stupid it is. So uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, turning heads. Mm-hmm. They're not going to fucking, they're, they're just going to take a, take, take a backseat to it. Unless it's something so apparently big and obvious, will they, yeah. you know, do something. And, you know, they're going to want to have to, show the government that oh yeah we're we're trying to enforce this hey we stopped this package we stopped that package but it's i mean you know how they get one of the ways they get drugs into this country um is they uh like they say they bring something up from south america into mexico to cross into the u.s border they'll they'll have five trucks loaded and they'll call the fucking uh border patrol and they'll or, or and uh you know the fbi and tell them where one of them's going to be yeah, and then they'll bust that one. The other four will get through, and then both parties win. It's like, hey, we got our quota, and then, hey, we got our our uh, they sacri- stash in. They sacrifice truck, yeah. one truck, which is you know, it's got a little bit in there, but it's not as much as the other truck. No, and then, no. And I, then I, the rest I've had a, get through. Yeah, I had a friend that was offered that job, and he turned it down because he didn't want to be the one. They don't tell which driver. Right? By the way, you're going yeah. to jail. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm all set with that too. I, I'd be good. You know, um, but I mean, it's it, the whole thing has just gotten so stupid, and I, I I honestly believe that there's people within the government, within the industry. My apologies, guys. Due to a uh, unforeseen dangle clack, we have lost some of this footage. So uh, we're gonna continue along right here. Um, again, my apologies. Uh, but let's move into the next segment, the brand new segment the podcast playlist and uh we're gonna start with bogan and uh see what he has to say so thank you guys and uh without further ado let's get back to the podcast old regime yeah that's a, old that's regime. a really good track old regime got some really good lyrics in there um right. bad religion definitely gotta have that um gotta go with like a classic no effect song which one? There's so many. There's so many. Um, it's funny, no effects. I actually picked up one of their albums from a discount shop not too too long ago. Oh yeah, which album? Oh, thanks. So thanks. long and thanks for all the shoes. That was yes. the last one. Yes. And it's funny because he got it from Savers, which is a <laughs> yeah, it was, store. Like, it was like a dollar. <laughs> I bought it for a dollar. That's fucking wicked. Right. Um, that's a great album, and they named it that because at the end of punk shows there would always be like tons of shoes thrown onto the stage because you know people lose their shoes in the pit. Yeah. And so they throw them up on stage. And so they, so long and thanks for all the shoes. It's oh a good man. Name for an album. Um, uh, all right, let's go with. Uh, I mean, if you got to go with something like "Sticking in My Eye," I mean that's just that's a classic. Okay. Stick it in my eye. No effects. Still love that song. Okay. Um, and and let's go with uh, something from. Ooh, who else? You are laughing. You don't write well sideways. No, I don't write well. <laughs> <laughs> it looks. <laughs> Boogan. <laughs> it's like Boogan. Let's go with maybe something from a 
Maybe it's probably something against me. Maybe maybe transgender dysphoria blues, because that's a that's a really that's a good that's a good one for people to listen to the lyrics and think about. Transgender euphoria blues. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll have to check those out. Those are for this new uh, new it's really podcast playlist. I think kind of like particularly relevant in uh, in the current climate. Hmm. Definitely. Matt, anything on oh. your mind? Well, while you guys, while uh, Bogan was making his choices, I was sitting there contemplating, how do I want to do this? Do I want to just give three songs that I like, um, or do I want to chop it up into little categories? Hmm. You know, for three songs. Um, so I decided I'm going to do the, the category thing. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, uh, a classic rock and roller. I, I, you know, listen to classic rock, classic heavy metal, um, from the, the time of black Sabbath, you know, all the way up until now. Mm. And, uh, still, you know, bands that are still releasing albums, um, that, uh, I still listen to. Um, and are some some of my personal, you know, favorites. So I'll start off with the uh, cla- the classic rock, and I'll go with uh, Sammy Hagar's heavy metal. Sammy, um, of course, I had to. I could have guessed you would have gone somewhere with Sammy Hagar on this well, one. You know, yeah, you are a diehard I'm a fan, Sam. bro. I've seen, I've seen Sammy in concert probably twelve times, three times with Van Halen. All right, so Sammy Hagar heavy metal. And then, uh, then we'll go into a little more more modern uh, rock, you know, modern metal. Yep. Um, you know, more like I should say, like stuff that's uh, current today. Bands that are that have come out within the last, you know, ten to ten to twenty, ten to fifteen years. Okay. And you know, so for that, I'll pick Shine Down, uh, Cut the Cord. Good song. It's one of my favorites. Definitely good song. I like that um, one. And then let's put the third one in the category of the one-hit wonders. Okay. One-hit wonders. Uh, I love I love one-hit wonders. Uh, Some time back, VH1 did a top 100 uh, greatest uh, one-hit wonders of all time, and I was surprised there were that many. But uh, um, I will go with uh, Toto's Africa. Oh, oh, there's going to be some... There's going to be some people out there that aren't going to like you very much, Matt Sinister, but we will put no. that down. No, <laughs> I yeah, like, yeah, and I've heard a couple different versions of it from different bands mm-hmm. and different styles of music too. Yep, there's a metal version by Tony, um, Tony Mackie or Reddy or whatever his name is. There. Yeah, yeah, I know uh, who you're talking about. The the like Norwegian dude. Yeah, he's like, I think he's in like, is he Holland? Is he Dutch? I think he's Dutch. I like his metal covers and stuff, and he does a yeah. really good one. Obviously. He did "Baby Hit Me One More Time" too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I've heard I've really heard all good. those covers, man. They're, they're great. Yeah, <laughs> he is a great dude. Uh, I have to admit, though, when it comes to Toto Africa, I am a fan. However, that being said, my daughter is not. Uh, she had to sing that in school chorus. <laughs> That's the whole reason I hate it is because you missed a lot of that. But I was the one who had to sit here with her and play the musical track <laughs> over, over and, over, and, over, and over. over again for her to get the hand signals right on time. Yeah. All right. She and I oh. are done with that song. We have been done with that song <laughs> for so <laughs> for like long. two years now. <laughs> All right. My so. Daughter is obsessed with Rose Tattoo by the Dropkick Murphys. Oh yes, that was the last song they played. She loves oh. that song. Like it come like it comes on my Spotify sort of daily drive mix all the time and she's like, Oh, Rose Tattoo and she's like sitting in the back of the car singing along. She loves it. Oh, that's awesome. And then, uh, eight, uh, she's five in June. Oh, okay. Oh wow. She's obsessed with Rose Ta- Rose Tattoo by Dropkicks and the other one is Sweet Candy by A C D C. She loves it. I haven't Mainly because she just one. loves candy. And so she's like, Oh, this song is like it's about me. Sweet candy. <laughs> 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 Oh man! She thinks it's great. Oh. She doesn't realize that. I think it's about like a stripper. I'm pretty sure that song. Is. <laughs> yeah. It's 
Mm-hmm. That sounds about <laughs> right. That sounds I, about I mean, right. It's ACDC, so I don't think it's actually about lollies. I think it's, I think it's about like, <laughs> a, a stripper called Paul Candy, I, I reckon. That's probably, yeah, that is that is quite a common name. Shit. That's quite a common yeah, name. Well, that's, yeah, well, so, I was listening to the lyrics, and I'm like, yeah, I think this might be about a stripper, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> she likes it. All right. Uh, Pixie, do you have some songs that you would like to add to this playlist here for the podcast? Yes, but I'm trying to remember the third one. I can hear the song in my head, and I can't. Ah, got it. What are the first two? What's the first? Savage Garden, Crash and Burn. Oh, wow. Savage Garden. Yes. That's one of her I favorite bands. Do yeah. know that is my favorite That's band. It's crazy that I have... Americans are into Savage Garden. They're like, oh, wow, yeah. Curry Award winners, big. big I have I mean, all three of the U.S. release CDs, as well as two CD sets that were released only over there that I had to convince somebody to purchase for me and ship here. <laughs> mm. I was I remember when um the self titled album with the black and the white yep. you know, two half faces and that came out in like ninety ninety I wanna say six. Yeah. I think. Ninety six, ninety seven. It was it was the Whenever mid that... mid to starting late nineties. Yeah, I was like eight or nine years old and that album, I was like, because I watched it, I used to sit there and watch, like, we had a music, sh- you know, show called uh, Video M- Hits and another one called Rage, and I would get up in the morning and watch, uh, you know, that, those music shows, and I just loved the Savage Garden tracks, I don't know, there's just something I <laughs> fucking loved about them. There is and, something um, about them that's just great. I don't know, you know, it's pop music, but it's had, like, a rock kind of feel to it as well. And, uh, yeah, I loved that album, and I got that for, like, Christmas or my birthday or something. 96, yeah, in 96, the debut single, I Want You. And I remember, yeah. ooh, I, I want, want you, you baby. And I, I need you, but <laughs> it's ooh, like, ooh, I it's want like a little find eight year old kid. Neither of you know the lyrics to that, and it's killing like, me. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We don't have to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so, so long that they got that big it, that, that it really uh, I don't the American market. they had I want you um yeah. not gunning down romance what was the other one uh animals oh, uh, truly madly deeply yes truly madly deeply and there was one off of their second US release CD that they made music videos for that they played on MTV over here Mm. But beyond that handful, like, they didn't really, like, they blew up, but they didn't blow up to the point that, like... Oh, they didn't stick around all that long, because they, they split yeah. in, like, 2001. So really, mm. an affirmation, I don't think, really had the same kind of success as the first album. No. And, and so, yeah, I think they <coughs> kind of fizzled out a bit. Um, Dan, uh, Darren Hayes kind of went on and did a little bit of a... A solo career, but didn't. Yeah, he didn't make it very far, though. Like honestly, the the two of them together, writing the music and the lyrics, made it a whole lot farther. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they were as as a teen, they were my favorite band, and as an adult, I still listen to those albums because, like you said, there's something about it. They're one of those bands. Well written pop music, I think. It's just good good pop music. Yeah. Well, it was pop, but it was they had the slower songs, ballads that were yeah, those ballads. Yeah, they were nice and they were lyrics wise, like they were relatable. And then they had like the faster jump around type stuff, and it was awesome. Absolutely. What's your next pick? C. W. McCall, Convoy. That's another good one. That's a good country song. C. W. McCall. And your third choice. Prodigy, Firestarter. Also another oh, good, good one. Song. <laughs> good song. Prodigy. I listen to everything except gospel and opera. And by everything, I mean I listen to a little ska, a little reggae, a little country, a little rock, a little... Polka? Very little metal. Very little polka. Ew. <laughs> the only polka I listen to is from Weird Al. 
Yeah, that, well, exactly. <laughs> like I consider him kind of. That that's about it. Um. So for well, my free. picks, what would I? Your turn. Yeah, my turn. What would I pick? Um. Well, one of the songs that I've really been on lately, and it's one that I've been playing over and over and over again. And I can't get enough of it. Is from a band called In Flames, and that is Stay With Me. Is probably. For them, it would be what I would classify as a ballad, uh, but it is such a good song. So I'm going to put in In Flames, Stay With Me. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to actually go meet them. And I hope, to Christ, that they play that song uh, when we go to see them. Um, the next song is going to be a little... Uh, lesser known or a lot lesser known and some people know that I've been on with this band uh, for a little while now I just recently found them uh, they started oh when was it 15 I want to say 2015 I think they started up and they were just a local New England band from Massachusetts uh, called <laughs> I know weird name Drive By Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> And <laughs> weird name. That's just a gross name. <laughs> that is a gross name. Well, the name of the song is even worse. Um, uh, yeah, uh, we're we're gonna play the first song that I'd ever listened to by them, and it it is entitled "Come Soaked Whore Beast." <laughs> <laughs> That's a band to listen to with grandma, right there. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, do not. Dad, what do are that. you listening to? Uh... <laughs> Shut, shut up and go to bed. <laughs> shut up and Play go in to the bed. other room. <laughs> Get out of here before I beat you. Ah, uh, yeah. I know. Really nasty. But, I mean, it's it, for me, it's not about the title of the song. It's not about the name of the band. For me, it's the, the music itself. And, uh, you know, if my brother hadn't put the bug in my ear about this band, I never would have actually looked them up on YouTube. And I, I do. I dig their music pretty good. Um, they are They are thrash metal through and through uh, and that's kind of my thing I was always involved really really deeply and very heavily invested in the um, underground hardcore scene so I was every Friday Saturday nights we'd go to the local Salem Elks Club and we'd have you know 10 bands from all over New England come and just jam out and play this massive show for well not massive show but this show for you know however many people showed up and it was just a good old time. It was a family kind of thing where, you know, if somebody gets pushed down or, or stepped on, you, you pick them up, you know. Everybody stops. And it's kind of like that with a lot of shows, though, now. See, you had a completely different experience. I preferred, like, the underground punk type stuff mm. where concerts would just pop up under a fucking overpass and the next thing you know, mm -hmm. there's... 60 to 70 punks flailing around with each other while someone's playing music. <laughs> <laughs> the one underground metal show I went to, I got punched in the side of the head and I got left there. What? Like, I got left there. <laughs> and it was not fun. That's not... They're meant to pick you up. That's the thing. Yeah, they are meant to pick you up. I was five foot three in my defense, or in their defense, most of the guys I was hanging around with were all 5'10 to a good 6'6 six, six to 6'8. Six, I don't know if they saw me <laughs> when mm -hmm. I went down. Um, so where am I going to go with my third choice? Um, I could go many different areas here, because uh, much like Pixie, uh, I listen to... My my musical tastes are very, very eclectic. Uh, I listen to quite a wide variety of stuff. Um, I think I'm going to go older with it, actually. I'm going to go a lot older here now and probably date myself a little bit, but uh, I'm a huge fan of instrumental guitars. And one song that I absolutely love to this day is by a man named Eric Johnson, and the name of the song is Cliffs of Dover. Ooh, that a song. was a really, really good song. So I'm going to say Cliffs of Dover by Eric Johnson. Eric nice. Johnson. Sweet. So we got quite a uh, selection of tunes here to add to the new playlist for the podcast. And uh, looking forward to getting onto that. I know that... Uh, 
things have been quite busy around here lately. That's uh, that's been a thing. And you know, guys know I I just picked up that new job, uh, so I've had. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you Studying very much. Studying fecal matter. Oh. Yeah, it was at first. <laughs> it started out that way. It did. Man, uh, it seemed like it. It started out as med school almost, because you got to learn the different illnesses and diseases that you can catch from the different bacteria, viruses, and protozoan organisms that live in the water. And first up was, of course, fecal-related illnesses. If you take a dump in a pool, what are you going to get? You know, what's the potential <laughs> for the? It's like, oh. Really? You're gonna, get, you're gonna get kicked out if you take it. <laughs> <laughs> little, little, little Billy is not allowed to come and use the pool as his personal dumping ground. No, yeah. no. Little Billy's getting kicked out, and if it's dad, he's definitely getting kicked out. <laughs> you know? I'm telling you, though, seriously, as somebody who. <laughs> if it's a dad, he's getting arrested. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a felony. Is, is he drunk? <laughs> <laughs> is he drunk? I think he might be drunk. Um, but no, it's it's uh, scary. You know, the things that you didn't know like before. I had no idea uh, the kinds of contaminants and the different numbers and ways that the water can be contaminated and can cause all these different things. And I'm like reading through it and I'm like, I never want to step foot in a pool again. I know yeah. people are dirty. Yeah, yeah. You're getting all the back, all the back information that the general public doesn't know about pools. Yeah, exactly. When I, when I, oh when I learned about these things about, are a fucking death trap. <laughs> when I learned about uh, chlorine, mm -hmm. I didn't really want to get into a pool again. No. Yeah, chlorine's like a really, really dangerous chemical. <laughs> it is. It's it is. In concentrated form. Like, yes, in concentrated form. You're gonna go soak form, yourself yeah. in this stuff. You know, it's like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's uh. Oh. It's been crazy, but now it moved from that into chemistry. So now I have to learn about how, you know, like you said, chlorine. I have to learn about how that reacts with the water. I have to learn how that reacts with the other kind of disinfectants and stabilizers that we add into the water as additives. Um, and some of them are pretty bad. Like if that you mix them directly, you know, uh, it's not it's not a good good thing to do. Uh, but no, it's getting to the to the good pieces that I need to know about circulation and stuff like that. So, but it's been pretty busy around here, um, and just been doing a lot of reading because he, when I walked in and he gave me the job, I just was handed this stack of paperwork and books. Then he's like, "Go ahead, go read these. I've highlighted the chapters you need to read." And so now I'm doing that, just waiting for the 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 job to start finally um but yeah it's uh i'd be like you're paying me for this aren't you yeah uh, seriously <laughs> am i am i being paid to go to school right now because that's kind of how i feel it should be no yes. <laughs> um, um go ahead matt no no no. um i was I, what i was gonna say was uh you uh you know, if I'm hired, I'm, I'm hired then, you know, <laughs> you need me to learn how to do the job, but you're going to, you're going to pay me to do it. Right. Absolutely. But no, it's a, it's going to be good. The only thing I wish was different was that the area where we live, because as a, uh, working in a pool industry, we only have a certain amount of months that pools are actually open here in new England, especially Massachusetts. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like four months and then close. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you can only work four months out of the year, unless you're from right. here, in which case it's six to seven months. Not even. <laughs> I even absolutely the... would go swimming on like is a it fifty an to sixty pool degree or day. Is it like a heated indoor sort of thing? Uh, I think he does both commercial and residential, but I believe even residential places around here, because there's big money around here, uh, even residential places will have indoor heated pools. Um, yeah. But it's uh it's a little bit of both, and the methods and procedures are different depending, um, you know, because you've got to take into consideration with an outdoor pool, sunlight, natural sunlight diminishes, uh, it diminishes the chlorine and bromine content within the pool, so you need a constant flow of those chemicals in order to maintain that stable level. But it, it differs. I'm not going to go into all that. It's uh it differs on the the application and the type of pool you're dealing with. 
But um, yeah, in addition to that, I don't know. Anything new with you, Matt, other than, you know, no, anything well, going I on mean, that's keeping uh, you busy? You're, you're, I know you're still doing your training. Oh, yeah, that's been getting more and more intense. You know, like I, you know, uh, after six weeks, I, uh, I dropped 21 pounds. I shed 14% body fat, and I lost three and a half inches around my waist. Mm. So, uh, you know, I'm in week seven right now. I've been, you know, you know, I had, I went to Vegas, but I, I, I stuck, stuck to my, uh, I didn't work out, but I stuck to my, uh, uh, diet style in uh, Vegas, you know, the keto, the keto diet. And, uh, um, that, which was an easy Friday night. The whole family went out for pizza and beer and I had to get meatballs and a salad. Oh. So, <laughs> just meatballs on its own though like no meatball yeah you yeah just, and you can't have any no, bread just meatballs nope they brought bread to the table i just looked at it and cried you know <laughs> uh, you know you know uh my girlfriend was taking some cheese and some pepperoni off her pizza and on a fork and feeding it to me you know <laughs> but uh uh but this week i've been uh, they re they finally uh like the gym i've been go i've been going to um, is a private gym, uh, but uh, I also had a, a Gold's member, uh, Gold's gym membership, which they moved everything outside, and fenced it off and put a cover. Oh, over okay. It. So the you know Corona safe. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they just uh, reopened uh, the Planet Fitnesses out here, so I've been going to, uh, you know, to work out inside, you know, because everything's inside again. You know, it's the, the full gym's open, and. Uh, so I went there today. Uh, just been training is as hard as I can without causing any. Uh, I mean, the Vegas trip definitely set me back. My back was in a terrible amount of pain while I was in uh, while I was in Vegas, but uh, I got through it, and uh, you know, I pretty much was you know had a contact high going on the whole time while I was in Vegas anyway. But uh, you know. Uh, I started back again, uh, you know, training again after being off for three days. Um, Monday was a great day. Tuesday, um, Tuesday was good. Wednesday, I wasn't doing so good. I, it was just like, just my the day. You ever have it where your day just doesn't start off right? You oversleep, you miss breakfast, yep. and then you the whole rugged. day is the whole day is fucked. <clears throat> so that that happened to me yesterday where. You know, I didn't get much sleep that night, and then I I, I uh, got up at uh, you know quarter to eight to get the kids up for Zoom school, and you know my girlfriend went to work, and I fell back asleep. I woke up, I took a shower, I laid down, I fell back asleep, and then I woke up at eleven fifteen, and I had to just get my stuff on because my I had my trainer at noon, and. Uh, you know, grab. I had to stop and grab a, a zero carb energy drink because I didn't have time to prep anything and just uh, go work out and get through it. And I wasn't feeling it. wasn't The rest of the day was shit. I just laid in bed and, you know, you know, ordered fucking chicken skewers and uh, steak to, to be delivered to eat that. You know, so I could eat. But I had. I just was not wanting to do anything. But my day started off good today. Like I said, Zack Snyder's Justice League. It's four hours, but it's really good. What's it about? What's Justice League about? It's, you said What's D. Snyder, justice? right? It's about justice. It's about it's justice. It's about Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Oh, I thought you said... Aquaman. Aquaman. You say Snyder, and I'm thinking... It's of a super group, but for... You know, I know what Justice like the League Avengers is from Marvel. The DC version. <laughs> DC, yeah. yeah. D I know DC Justice League. For some reason, I, oh, I had I D. Snyder. D. Snyder. <laughs> yes. I For some reason, I had it in my head that you said D. Snyder. I'm thinking Twisted, Twisted Sister. Justice League, yeah. Yeah. I was like, wait. Okay, I remember D. Snyder and Strangeland. I wonder what Justice League is about. <laughs> he was an oddly good actor. Oh, I love Strangeland. For somebody that was not an actor by nature originally, he did really well. 
Yeah, he did. Like frighteningly. He was supposed well. to do a sequel to that movie, but he can't get. He's been trying forever to get the rights back to it. Really? Yeah, because he didn't own the rights to it, and uh, he uh, he wanted to do another one, and you know it didn't do great numbers. No. So they didn't. Nobody wanted to. No, no distributor wanted to do it, and the people that own it didn't want to do it. I felt so like it was one of those trying to buy classics. it back, and there's been all kinds of fighting apparently over it. I th- I feel like that was one of those B-rated. Uh, cult classics almost yeah. you know yeah. like very very select few people know about it but those that do know about it absolutely loved it and it created a following behind it uh i mean captain howdy what are you gonna say <laughs> that's <laughs> you know? that whole if you know you know thing yeah yeah <laughs> it's kind of like the army of dead and the evil or evil dead and army of darkness there um but we actually have of course the one and only chaos pixie who's the google uh Resident Google associate over here, <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, question Thanks. producer. So, what do you have that you would like to ask? Well, I don't. You guys both follow Bogan. Yes. You guys both watch shows and listen to things, and I didn't even know Bogan was like a YouTube person. Like when when I met you at nbe in 2019 (laughs) and like i bombarded you for a picture i did so simply because my other half went oh my god it's bogan and he got all excited you're like i should get a photo with this guy some other people are you know i never know (laughs) no i caught you outside (laughs) the funny thing is i caught you outside like we weren't even in nve yet and i was like you were right in front of us in line as we were going into nve and I was like, I oh, my word. It's usually what I'm doing. I piss a lot. So. <laughs> when he gets in there, he is going to get bombarded. So I'm going to get a picture now. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Sam, has that <laughs> happened to you where you've been taking a leak and somebody's like, hey, can I get a picture? <laughs> it happens all the time. I have actually quite a small bladder. And having a small bladder and drinking lots of beer, they don't go well together. So you have to break one beer well. yeah. and then piss for me. Once I break the seal, it's beer and piss, beer and piss. And so I frequently have to leave the halls wherever I'm at these expos and go to the toilet. And I, I you know, I leave it to like the last minute. So when I'm, when I'm going to the toilet, I'm already busting. And so I'm like, oh, hey, Bogan. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be one minute, dude. Let me, <laughs> the way back. <laughs> Let me just go and fucking empty my bladder. Otherwise, um, it's going to be awkward when we take a photo and there's like a little puddle next to you. Um, <laughs> I had to get this photo with Bogan. He's pissing on my shoes right now. <laughs> I've had one or two people like try to talk to me, and I'm like very strictly like a no chatting while pissing kind of yeah. dude. Like I'm sorry, but that's just weird. I, I know, would be that guy like Adam Sandler and Billy Madison who would just stand next to you and just pee himself intentionally <laughs> just to make you <laughs> not feel bad. <laughs> So I've had one or two people that try to like, oh, hey, Bogan has things, and I'm just like, just give me a minute, dude. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm like, I'm kind of ruthless when it comes to taking a piss. I'm like, this is my moment to just, you know, pee and not talk to anybody. No, you can't no. talk to It's your, your little 30-second mini break. It's weird enough that we're only 40 centimeters apart with our dicks out. We don't need to have a conversation. <laughs> While we're doing it's it. even more weird if you're in one of those bars that doesn't have yeah. urinals. They have like the pee trough. You know? <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's like, dude, I mean. stop looking at me. Don't make eye contact. Just, it's just. <laughs> and you know something's I don't up. understand you know, guys you know, that do that. That they think they can have a chat while they're. I'm like, I'm sorry, but where the fuck do you get? Like, what's going on here, dude? Stop it. Stop. You do your thing. I'll do my there's... thing. Maybe while we're washing our hands, we can have like a like a. Like, we can start the chat and then take it outside, but when we're standing at the trough, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, and when you're on one of those long, it's a long trough, and there's just the two of you in there, and for some reason, the dude stands pretty much right next to you. You're yeah, like, what are you doing, man? It's like a whole you have four meters. Go you're over like, there. What fucking dude. meters you could be using there? Why are you here? That is not even just an issue in the men's. In the women's room, you will have the stalls, and you will have eight stalls. And no one ever goes in the first one. You will never find, unless that bathroom's packed, you will never find anyone in the first stall of a women's room. 
And it's almost like they file in. Like, if I go in and I go in the second stall, the next person who comes in can't go anywhere down the end. They have to go right in stall number three. It's like, I, I really, I sat down to pee and to fart in private. Could you please <laughs> <laughs> over, Girls, like, very secretive about when they two fart. stalls. You don't really want someone in that stall next to you. <laughs> so. This is yeah, true. I, I love it when, when women tell me that uh, they've never farted. I'm like... Then you're not human. All right? <laughs> you know, we've all done it. We've all done it. Don't lie. Um, yeah, the, the, the scariest thing about the peach trough, though, is it has ice in it. Because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm just wondering if there's some fucking sick bastard with a straw on, <gasps> on the other end of that thing. <laughs> 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 and you thought my band name was gross? <laughs> hey, there are some fucking weird people in, in this world. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in with their rum and coke, they finish it while taking a piss, and they just throw the ice and everything in there. Like, why? Is no, there they ice put the, in actuality the ice is in there to one for for water, because the ice melts and then, you know wa so there's water in the trough. Oh, okay. And and two, uh, it's it's to, uh, have to plumbing connected. Is it not got a fucking? No. It does. <laughs> It Hashtag homemade pump. lemonade. What are you doing? <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go fill up the urinal again. You know, the ice is melted. No. Who was the poor bastard to have to do that? I don't, I don't know. But, uh, you know, luckily I, I don't frequent those bars anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, what I was asking is both of them kind of know you way more than I do. I know you're the Australian guy that I've watched a few of your reviews before I've bought products just to get confirmation that they were decent. Yeah. So I came up with a few random ass questions to, to get to know you Pixie's way. Okay. My first one, and Chris is going to shit himself because I don't say this word. I hate this Whoa. word. This is the one word in my house. Whoa. That if you oh, heard you it, know what this word is. yeah. If yeah. you heard this word in my house, someone was eating a fist and someone was hitting the ground. Mm. <laughs> so the c word. Over there, you guys call people cunts on a regular yeah. basis. Yeah. Over the over here, it tends to be a fighting word. It, it's not oh, yeah. as common. What word over there do you have that equates the C word over here? Like, is there something, if one Australian calls do. somebody else this, like, hands are going to get thrown? Like, an actual um, insult that is only an insult. It, we don't really have a word, I think, that quite gets to the level of, of cunt in America. Um, but... See, like, you can say to your mate, you know, like, well, you can't get us a beer. Or, you know, fuck off, you can't, you know, if he's, if he's, you know, doing something annoying. And that's fine. You wouldn't, you wouldn't call your wife that. Like, you don't really call females that over here. Yeah. Um, but if someone is, is a real, if you are going to fight someone or you want to fight someone, you know, calling them a dog cunt would be would be getting that's that's you're, you're pissed off if you fucking dog cunt you're pretty you're pretty pissed off if you're okay me. okay i've been sitting on that question all week yeah, <laughs> yeah one, the americans don't the one it's really hard for americans to understand that the english that <clears throat> you know anyone from from the uk so you know scotland and, and ireland use it as well um and we use it in like so many different ways like if he's if he's a crazy dude who's doing something kind of cool but crazy, he can be a sick cunt. Um, <laughs> oh, it's like something really like, bad over here is a wicked pisser. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can be a sick cunt if some dude's like bombing down a really steep hill on a skateboard going fast. Like that dude's a sick cunt. Um, if 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 he's like crazy, he's a mad cunt. Um, <laughs> if he's a really good bloke, he can be a top cunt. Um, <laughs> hey, I think that's me, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, um, or I was. And then, and then you can use it, you know, derogatory, like in terms of, you know, he's a shit cunt or he's a dog cunt. Um, and so it's quite weird. And 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 we can just, you know, we use it quite. You would use it with your mates. So you mm -hmm. could be hanging around, you know, just just the boys shooting the shit, and someone's going to get a beer, and you're like, yeah, grab us a beer too, cunt, you know, or um. You know, yeah. you can use it's... you, but again, you, you, there's like an unspoken or untaught way to use that word. And you, yeah, you wouldn't say to your wife like "fuck off, cunt." 
but you definitely say that to your mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, them them's fighting words over here. Not if yeah. you don't want to wake up, or, you know. A week <laughs> exactly. Later, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not not if something. Mate, you know, I you drink a few beers and your mate does one of those little sack taps and he gets you. Oh. Like, oh fuck, I can't, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. That's, that's totally fine, but yeah, you don't you don't call your grandma or your wife a cunt. Um, <laughs> Sam, no. Are you a uh, Jim Jeffries fan? Yeah, he's funny. He's Dude, funny. he does a great bit where he talks about the word word cunt and how like you know Australians will say cunt, you know, just like commonplace every day. Yeah. But you're never gonna see or hear an Australian say motherfucker. It just doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, we don't. But, really heard, use but I have. I, that's very I American. have heard Australians use it. But we do uh, use it a bit. Um, I'll use it a bit when I get like pissed off if something I'm doing breaks or like I hurt, I hurt myself. I'll be like, motherfucker, you know, like I sliced yeah. my thumb, uh, the other day. And I think I went like motherfucker at the fucking bread knife. Um, <laughs> um it's good to know we're not the it. only ones who yell at inanimate objects when they piss us off. <laughs> we probably use wanker more than motherfucker or bastard, um, and stuff like that. Shit. We do love shit a lot as well. Well, shit and bastard, really I think, are, are pretty universal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's... Yeah, motherfucker's not really... That's more American, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she's definitely one of those people that, that cringes <laughs> at that word. I do. I, I try not to, but I visibly cringe, especially if it comes it, out of nowhere. Like, I expected it, bringing that up in this conversation. So it's not it as bad. It sounds weird coming out of an American's mouth. Like with an American accent, cunt does, definitely sounds a little. It just sounds a little weird. It's just <coughs> a little like, harsh. It's. Let it's me a beer, you cunt. <laughs> yeah. It does oh. not. Yeah, it, you gotta put that extra T on it. <laughs> but if it's an Australian, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, fucking what a sick cunt. You know, it it it, it totally sounds normal. Um, <laughs> it doesn't it really roll does off too. of the tongue with many of the American dialects like it does for a native Australian. I heard that Mike describing Ann Coulter in a song as a cunted cunt, and I thought that was quite funny. That, 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 <laughs> it's like, fitting, that's for sure. <laughs> You're <right>. wrong. <laughs> Second question on the list. Yes. We have some scary-ass fucking animals over here. We have some shit that we know Bears. not to mess with. Bears. Uh, yeah, exactly. We've got bears. We've got gators. We've got fucking cougars. Uh, you, you don't want to mess with that. A lot of yeah. people. However, do, oh yeah, they do. Yeah. They do. Shouldn't, but they do. <laughs> However, over in Australia, I've noticed a theme where a lot of the things that you don't want to fuck with are kind of the things that look cute and cuddly and innocent. What is one animal over there? that you do not want to fuck with. Like, if you stepped out your back door and this animal was there, you would be like, ha ha, nope. fuck, nope, I'm done with the day. Bye. I think it's most of the time it's like, it, it's your deadly snakes. If you mm. if you step outside and there's a fucking, like, king, like where I am in South Australia, we get king browns, and they're, I think, the second or third oh, deadliest snake in the world. Like, you've got about mm. 20 minutes to get to a hospital and get the anti-venom before you're dead. Ooh. Um... So, like, a king brown is, is pretty, you're like, oh, fuck that shit. Yeah, I'm going to call the <laughs> snake guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have um, a shotgun snakes, handy, so. <laughs> that being there said, though. Snakes, like, you know, a red belly black snake or, or whatever that, you know, you can probably deal with yourself. But, like, a king brown, you're like, I want a gun or, you know, a really long bladed stick. <laughs> um <laughs> Probably up in Queensland and Northern Territory, it would be a, a crocodile, like a pretty decent-sized saltwater croc, because um, mm. they can move pretty quickly. Um, they can move surprisingly that, everything fast. Everything else you can kind of deal with. Most of the shit here, it doesn't really want to stick around if it's dangerous, except maybe a croc. Um, mm. that, that'll probably <laughs> say, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> You're so <laughs> tasty. But like all of our spiders... Um, that are deadly, you know, you can kind of deal with them. You just don't want to find them under a blanket in your bed or something like that. Oh, yeah. Put your foot in a boot and... Ugh. Nope. Or, you know, a great white shark. If you're if you're out in the ocean, you know, you got to be on a surfboard to kind of encounter one of those at a distance where it's going to be dangerous. Otherwise, you know, if you're just in, in waist-deep water, you're probably not going to see one. Mm. But, yeah, a great white shark. If you're out on a surfboard and you see a fucking great white... Yeah, you're panicking. Like, you want to get the fuck out of there. Yep. <laughs> Without drawing too much attention. 
Yeah, you just don't, don't really you... slowly walk away when you're out in the water. That's don't dangle your feet. Don't dangle your feet. That's not a good idea. <laughs> try to not look. Try to look as unseal like as possible. That's that's the thing that they think you are. If you're on a surfboard, you look like a seal. You got little legs flapping out, and then you got a kind of like you know wedge shaped body. You look like a seal. That's why they attack surfers. Ooh. Um, under the water, if you're a scuba diver, you don't really get attacked by a great white because you don't look like a seal. Yeah, you don't you don't look surfers. like what would be a food source. Yeah, yeah, it's the surfers that just unfortunately have a silhouette similar to a seal, and so they go, "Oh, seal!" And then that's why they spit you out because they taste the warm blood, and they don't they don't like that warm blooded animal. It's not their mm. uh, their food, so they spit you out. But unfortunately, like one bite from a decent sized great white will take your fucking leg off. So yeah, yeah, and then it's screwed. Doesn't matter that he didn't want to eat, which is kind of you know, man didn't even didn't even eat the food. He just killed him. <laughs> just left him there. Yeah. I think my favorite, I've never been to Australia, but of the Australian animals I know about, I think my favorite is the wombat. Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, and a friend of mine <laughs> described them as these cute little cuddly terrors that don't really move quickly, and you don't ever want to mess with one on the road because it's like hitting a friggin' no. rock. Yeah, if you hit one of those with your car, <laughs> you're going to do some serious fucking damage because they're just all muscle, um, and they will fuck up your car. Wow. <laughs> Same with the kangaroo. If you hit a kangaroo with your car and you don't have a bull bar on there, you, you're going to fuck up your vehicle. Wow. But yeah, wombats are uh, are tough stock healer, but they're not dangerous. They're just, you know, they kind of grunt and run around. And <laughs> I was going to say that that would be one that I would like to have as a pet is a guard wombat. They would suck as a guard <laughs> wombat. But I think anything that waddles instantly has a cute character, and, and wombats have that kind of waddly look to them when they walk. So. But the most interesting thing about wombats for me is they poop cubes. They do. That is a, a super funny fact, is they shit little brick, like little diamonds. <laughs> they little shit little bricks. bricks. <laughs> they literally guy. shit bricks. <laughs> yeah, they do. No, I've seen some, uh, I've seen some YouTube videos of, of people trying to fuck with kangaroos, and oh. the kangaroo just beats the piss out of the fucking well, they're really only a problem if you corner a big kangaroo. If you get them, yeah. like, into a paddock where they're cornered or, you know, in some trees where they feel cornered, they'll arc up and they might try and fight you. I've seen them attack a dog or two, but it's generally because the dog is kind of, like, doing what dogs do and they, they like, you know, chasing <laughs> no. this kangaroo around. The kangaroo's like, fuck you, dude. they got some seriously powerful claws <coughs> as well, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I tell you what, though. Uh... No, I'm sorry, Sam. You're not really going to get attacked by a kangaroo unless you're doing something to really piss it off. <laughs> well, I remember uh, when those the real bad fires were going on out there. Um, like fucking every kangaroo, year, basically. Then. Well, <laughs> this was, I think, yeah, that's true. It's like California, um, but uh, this was like this was getting a lot of coverage. I mean, the, 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 there were more fires than usual. This was like a year, yeah. like two, yeah, like two years last, ago. This time last year was mental. yeah. Um, Kangaroos were running out of the, running out of the woods, running out of the bush and hugging yep. fucking people. Like, like, you know, yeah. Like, <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Well, the people in certain areas had to retreat into like shallow water and 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 shallow lakes in certain areas because the bushfires literally they couldn't get out of the area by car, so they had to just sort of drive. Some people drove their four wheel drives into the water, and then people were just literally standing around in waist deep water as this fire was raging on the on the shore. And you could see like kangaroos had retreated into the water with them, and Ooh. yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty gnarly. Wow. I just I remember America's Funniest Home Videos when I was a kid, and this guy walks up to a kangaroo, and it doesn't look like it's a giant sized kangaroo. Like, the, the head only comes to the middle of the guy's chest. But he walks over and he turns around and crosses his arms like the California bad boy. Like, hell yeah, I'm getting a picture with this thing. And that kangaroo freaking looks up at him, straightens up, turns, bops back on his tail, and just double back foot hammers <laughs> this guy. And he just, he sails. Like, it literally yeah. just sails. Well, they got really what? powerful back legs. That's how they get around. Is just hopping on those two big legs. So yeah, really, Jeez. really strong muscles. And they use their tail to like a tripod. They prop back on their tail and then just kick. Oof. But it, I mean, this guy sailed. I mean, he went straight out a good five or six feet before he dropped, and that thing was half his size. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. ho, ho, ho. one of my all-time favorite scenes in any movie. 
is in Crocodile Dundee. When they're out there and those those uh, city cowboys are out there shooting the, the kangaroos for fun, and Crocodile Dundee gets behind it, gets a dead kangaroo, and stands behind it with a shotgun, and the uh, and the uh, the cowboys are drunk and they're like, oh, he's got a gun, shit, you know, and it's, it's, <laughs> you know, and it's different when the animals have guns, and I have one that has been on my bucket list to do with deer hunting. Pick up a dead deer with a shotgun behind as they're shooting back. You know? Oh man! Oh, that would be great. Um, and my third and final question: Obviously, every country has their foods that you really don't find everywhere else. What is one food from over there that you wish was available for everyone to try? And don't say Vegemite. Oh, well, yeah, don't I mean... say Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, it's got to be it's got to be the sausage roll because that's delicious. Sausage and roll. And I don't think I mean you guys have pies a little bit in the U.S., but mm -hmm. we're talking like meat pies here. Um, you guys don't even you guys do your apple pie and stuff like that, but yeah, you can find a pie in the U.S., but I don't think you guys really get into the sausage roll at all, which is essentially like mince meat with some herbs and spices in mixed in with the mince. Um, and then you roll that into like a, a little mint sausage, and then you wrap like a puff pastry around it. Ooh, and Ooh. Kinda it's fucking like, delicious. Kind of like wow. a dog in a blanket or whatever it is. Pigs in a blanket. The I was hot gonna say either pigs in a, in a blanket. See that's, see, that's a sausage though. That's like yeah. a hot dog sausage wrapped yeah. in it, isn't it? Yeah. Did you get yeah. those over like... here? But this is different. The mince meat that yeah. is used in sausage roll is quite different to a hot dog. Oh. Um, it's not as finely ground as a hot dog mince okay and it also has a bunch of nice sort of herbs and and you know spices kind of mixed wow. in with that mince see that sounds um, good because when i think meat pies over here i think like if you go into like a little greek restaurant or a portuguese restaurant they'll have yeah. meat pies but it's literally like a pie made of meat that they put into you get like a wedge <laughs> of pie no no nothing like that here <laughs> we love our meat pies and our sausage rolls um and so yeah sausage rolls probably the thing that you be pretty hard to find in america i think okay well so i have one we do it. and we've talked about this before this is on the topic of food as well <laughs> uh we've talked about this a little bit before matt about different things that we like on sides and condiments and one thing that we talked about was burgers what would make your burger the best burger oh for we me like... or are you talking to sam well, I'm talking to Sam, and then we can get to you if you have a... Oh, okay. All right. Well, like a traditional Aussie burger will have... We put two things I don't think any other place puts on burgers, and that is beetroot, like a slice of beetroot, mm -hmm. and an often egg. You can put a, put a fucking fried egg with your, you know, your beef patty, your lettuce, your tomato, your cheese, and then slice of beetroot, and then if you want to go real fair dinkum Aussie, chuck in a, a fried egg as well. Okay. And that's pretty good. That's a pretty, it's a pretty good burger. They call, I think McDonald's did one for a while. They called it the McOz or the Aussie Burger or some shit. That was what only over it. there. I don't think that ever reached over here. Yeah, it's like a bit of bit of uh, beetroot is is an Australian kind of thing okay. on a burger. I'll have to try that. Do you guys do beetroot over there? We, we do get them. <laughs> we get them. But... Yeah, you can get them, but it's not commonplace. It's like, you know, like purple and, mm -hmm. and, you know, they usually put it, I think, it must be in, in vinegar or something. Yes, to... yes. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking yeah, about so... regular beets, just the, the Yeah, we just purple... call them beets. Yeah, we just call them beets. We don't call them beetroot. Beet. Okay, beetroot. So, but the way that we eat it is not, no one gets like the full fucking beetroot and then slices it up and then eats it. It's got to be, you know, I guess they ferment it in, in yep. vinegar. For... In vinegar. Yep. Yeah, you mm -hmm. get, we get those for like Thanksgiving and stuff sometimes. It comes in like a glass bottle a glass with the jar. purple juice and you, you yeah, put it. Yeah, purple juice. And if you get yeah. that on anything, it's stained for life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I actually yes. dyed my hair with that when I was a teenager. That was a yeah, it was common <laughs> thing. <laughs> that was a common thing to use beet juice. Yeah. But for... A fried egg on a burger is really good. I'm I do that pretty pretty often because I like my burgers. I don't if I want a salad, I'll eat the salad. I don't want any vegetables on my burgers. Okay, I just want I want burger burger man. Yes, and but you could put bacon and a fried egg on top of it too. That you know that yeah, yep. that's good. Um, Protein only. <laughs> yeah, and and doing keto now, 
I refuse to wrap it in lettuce, so I'm just gonna eat the the, the stuff. I'll just remove the bun and just eat 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 it as is right there. But when people are wrapping it in lettuce, I'm like, that's not a burger. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a glorified salad. <laughs> yes, that's a that's a salad wrap. Yep. Is what it is. Absolutely. Um, me, I think we've. I, I've talked about mine before. My favorite burger of all time is the bacon mushroom cheeseburger. Uh, it has to have the lettuce, the tomato. Um, I don't know. I could go either white onion or red onion, but it's got to have some sliced onions on it, pickles, and then uh, obviously some cheddar cheese. I don't. Eh, American is good, but I like cheddar cheese. So uh, I'll throw some of that on there. Ketchup and mustard, and I'm good to go. Occasionally, I'll throw some like dill relish on there, but see to I, me, that's all you taste. Then you don't taste the really the quality of the meat if it's good meat. I don't overload it with ketchup and mustard. You know. <laughs> I had a damn well, good burger know, for how, dinner tonight. How, how some burgers are out here, it's just it's this thin, it's tiny. Yeah. You know. Well, that's why I like to go to places like uh, Five Guys, where they make <laughs> the burger like that and like that. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of burgers that i like yeah, to you eat. don't have you don't have an in and out out there california we got in and outs all over the place and in and out is a good burger is it, it is an amazing burger i'm yeah. gonna have to find one you know uh, there's not a lot of good food in california to begin with you got to go out east <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to get good food um, there's good mexican food in california like yeah there's mexican. good mexican food yeah that's true but mm. uh, as far uh, as what's that no no go ahead I was just uh, uh as far as like good italian food you're not going to find good Italian food here in America. No, you got to come to the in, East Coast for in, that. In uh, California, that's just, you know, Olive no, Garden like is not real Coast. Italian food. It's like seafood. You've got to go to, got to go to the East Coast for that authentic yeah. Italian. It's like seafood. Even go Maine. Gawk. Even pizza out here is, you know. Not pizza. It's not real. I think, it's, I it's, think when they're like traditional Italians like find out how Americans do pizza, they're just like outraged. They're just, they are. <laughs> right? You put pineapple on it? <laughs> Oh, I saw a funny thing where the people ordered pizza in like a traditional, like where pizza was started in Italy. I forget which part it was, and they Sicily delivered them pizza with fucking pineapple on there. And like they opened the box, just check at the delivery, you know, at the door. And some of them were like throwing the pizza back in the delivery guy's face, and just like getting so angry. Oh, what is man. this shit? <laughs> How dare you bring me this blasphemy? Oh, that's funny. Pineapple. Yep, pineapple on pizza. Uh, Ooh, uh, uh, I'm uh, not a fan. I no, neither am I. There's no. like a, there's always a battle between those that think pineapple is a, an ingredient that goes on pizza and those that don't. I'm not a fan of it. I, I don't no, do no. it a lot. I'll do it from time to time. My daughter likes Hawaiian pizza, so she'll do the the pineapple mm. and ham on the tomato sauce with the cheese. We do. Um, we only it, get it from one or two places though, and one of the places we get it from does the sauce, the layer of cheese. They put the ham and the pineapple down, and then they cover it. Like, when you order extra cheese, they cover it with a whole second layer of cheese. And it just turns into this amazing ball of melty, cheesy goodness. <laughs> I'm the same way with my pizzas as I am with my burgers. I don't want vegetables on my pizza. Really? I just want meat, more no meat. And... No, no. Pineapple's no. not a no, vegetable. It's a fruit. Yeah. But so are tomatoes. <laughs> so are tomatoes, yeah. Truth. Truth. So you don't even like tomato sauce. No, I like tomato sauce, but oh, okay. uh no. Like uh there no, there are like like in a salad or in certain other things, I'll put a lot of, like when I make soups, when I make my own soups, I load it up with all kinds of different vegetables, but then I blend it down. Right. So they're blended so you can get all this nutrients from all these vegetables. And uh, but Not you don't really have to feel deal like with the vegetables. texture. It's the texture of ve of certain of vegetables that I. Uh, yeah, I I'd rather you. I'd rather I'd like I said I'd rather uh, <coughs> you know make them into a soup eat... or juice them. Yeah, I can't eat mushroom for that reason. I don't like the texture of mushroom. It's slimy, and I just I can't mm -hmm. get into it. And it's chewy. I can't. Yeah, and I just yeah. it's not my thing. It, I, for I like me, the it's... flavor of mushroom, like mushroom soup, when the mushroom has been like chopped up and you know made so cooked down so much. Mm -hmm. I like the flavor of mushroom, but it's the texture of just eating an actual piece of mushroom. Ugh. Right. There are very select ways that I can eat mushroom because I'm kind of like you. I love the flavor. I think it tastes delicious, 
but that texture is very much to me it's very much like tofu where it's a they're not there like mm. there's it you're chewing something but it doesn't actually feel like <laughs> you're chewing what you should be chewing when i first started wrestling in 94 you know from 93 through 90 oh, i don't know 96 when i was really like focusing on my my diet um i used to make myself eat vegetables because i didn't know about back then i didn't know i was i grew up with you know the the canned of cooked vegetables for the side dish and i used to just like make either a can of peas or a can of green beans or you know whatever and i would just sit there with a glass of water and just force myself to eat them and i tried not to throw up you know it wasn't until years later that i started learning that you know cooking vegetables especially boiling the fuck out of them like my parents used to do and uh is not a good quality way to eat you know have good vegetables you know <laughs> it's just yeah. a it's just a can of mush at that point right? <laughs> well we are coming up to time guys we are at uh just about there we're just about at two hours so we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up chaos pixie matt sinister thank you guys again for a great show and of course, Sam Vaping Bogan, thank you so much for coming on, my friend. Uh, what have you got coming up this week that people can look forward to? Uh, I've got my Sui side mech review recorded. I just need to edit that, so that's going to be coming up. And then I've just got a bunch of other stuff that I need to record and do, so that will be happening um, over the next few days. I've got a bit of a busy weekend, so probably just that video until next week. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to get stuck into a whole pile of stuff. Sweet. And we are going to continue to give Mr. Grim Green shit until the two of you guys are doing a, a show together. Yeah, wasn't that the Brogans? Yeah, well, we did that one, and it was so much fun. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I, really want to do, I really want to do more with Nick, um, and I think he does too, but he's just, you know, he's got such he's a busy a schedule. Busy. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to uh, it's hard to get him to do it. Hard to nail yeah, him he down. Does, he does a lot. He does a lot. He and, does, uh, yeah. Um, he, uh, I remember when... Uh, I think it was on one of your uh, your live streams, Sam, that uh, he uh, or live YouTubes, he uh, uh, you mentioned about doing the uh, doing doing something with Nick. So the next day, I think was the vlog, and we were just flooding him with, yeah, you, you and Sam got to do something, man. You got to do giving the show different names, and you know, <laughs> just got all kinds of, you know, it's yeah, like it Rogan, was like I think was the best it, one. The Grogan, yeah, or uh, Grim and Bogan, uh, Grogan show, Sam and Nick show, uh, give it like a '50s feel, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think what did what did uh, what the hell did I say to him? Uh, uh, oh yeah, I said it's you know he says hello and welcome, welcome and hello. I was like hello and welcome, you cunts. That was the. That's, yeah, that was the <laughs> so, so how about that, you, I mean, that that would be great. Um, uh, well, my, my week's, uh, you know, uh, almost, uh, you know, I take weekends off. I don't like to do much on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> At least not right now because I'm training so hard every week. Uh, um, you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, um, YouTube at Matt Sinister. Um, on my, uh, my TikTok and Instagram, and particularly right now, I am documenting my journey to getting my health back. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to post daily videos of, you know, pre pre diaries, post diaries, uh, and then the workout uh, filming the workout, uh, you know, just clips. Eventually I hope to put all this stuff together and get a little documentary on YouTube, uh, nice. on my channel. Um, cause I really feel alive again, you know, uh, uh, you know, just a little background for you, Sam. I was uh, working uh, last, about last year, this time, I was working as a security supervisor at a, a hospital and then COVID hit and we were in lockdown and we we're, you know, having very few people allowed into the hospital. Well, some guy was able to get, you know, sneak his way in and he tried going to see his baby mama, baby mama wasn't having that. Plus he wasn't even supposed to be there. They, yeah. uh, they kicked him out. He put up a fight. That's what they called me. I showed up and we got into a pretty good brawl. Um, which caused me to, uh, to get, to injure my back, uh, my left knee. And, uh, I had, uh, that job had already destroyed me because I was working 65 to 80 hour weeks. 
Damn. So my, my, my diet, my, my life was drive through on the way to work, DoorDash at work, drive through on the way home, sleep for two or three hours. And I did that for nine months. And I gained, I probably gained 75 pounds uh, doing oh, that. Wow. And then, then I got hurt and then I was, you know, I couldn't do anything. And I was laying, at, laying on my ass at home. And when you're laying on your ass at home, you don't want to just eat, drink spirulina shakes and eat vegetable salads. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, I gained uh, I gained more weight and I got heavier than I'd ever been in my life. And then uh, some some time ago, uh, I just decided that I'd had enough of this and I didn't care what the what the consequences were, how much pain I was going to have to go through. You know, I'm turning 45 in May for the first time in my life. I had to go on blood pressure medication. And, you know, my, both my grandparents and my father had heart. My father had two heart attacks. Um, and I do not want to, I watched what he went through. He had four back surgeries. I, I do not want to allow that to happen to me, especially cause I know better. I know about nutrition. I know about training. I know about all these things. And I just finally just said, fuck this. And I hired a personal trainer and nutritionist. Um, and I started this uh, journey seven weeks ago and, uh, it's it's going really good um i'm really happy where i'm at but it's only it's not even the end of the beginning yet it's still just the beginning mm. yeah awesome dude that's great to hear as um yeah i saw someone on my uh facebook feed this morning you know, i don't know how i end up with these all these friends on facebook you know vaping and stuff brings us together mm -hmm. yeah but uh yeah this dude had like a a, a scare with like a, a kidney disease or, or kidney failure mm. um and then he you know he was doing the same thing eating shit food not looking after himself um and i saw a photo of just five months uh since he sort of started eating right and getting a personal trainer and going to the gym and the dude's like went from uh i think 170 pounds down to 100 pounds and he's like ripped as shit and he looks super healthy and it's just oh, wow. it's uh you know i'm lucky i don't have to worry about my weight really at all <laughs> um uh, i'm i you know i'm blessed with skinny jeans from my dad huh how old are you i'm 33 in a few months time oh Just i was gonna say he's gotta be an 80s baby because he was talking about being eight or nine yep when savage garden yeah. got big and i was like 10 or 11 <laughs> Yeah, so but he's I still an play sport. Baby. You know, I I play uh, I play soccer. Um, you know, oh, I train a couple true. times a week, play games. So I still kind of look after myself in terms of doing active Fitness. stuff. But you know, I don't have to try very hard to keep my weight pretty pretty Whoa. slender. Um, but it's it's super uh, I think awesome. Just seeing in the last year, I'm seeing more and more of it with COVID. I think people have taken time to kind of reflect on on themselves and get healthy and you know work. Not that the gyms are open really or have been, but people are doing doing it other ways, and it's um, yeah. yeah, it's super impressive. One thing that uh, that uh, where I first learned a lot, where I first learned a lot about vegetables, and learning about nutrition was an Australian named Joe Cross. Uh, he uh, did this documentary called "Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead," where I for, think I heard about that one. Where for sixty days he drank nothing but green juice, green vegetable juice, and fasted that whole time just drinking juice. And then he did another two months, uh, two or th two or four months of, uh, you know, completely clean eating after that. Uh, and he dropped over a hundred pounds. He reversed all his medical problems that he was having. Wow. Wound up not having to take any more medication. It was really, really inspiring. And uh, and talk about vaping, uh, how vaping can help. Uh, being on keto, I have completely eliminated all the sugars from my diet, which I was a, I had a sugar tooth. Well, I could sit down and eat a gallon of ice cream. I, yeah. you know, I could, I, the soda was what was really killing me because I could drink two gallons of soda easy in one day, easy. And, uh, now that I have no sugar in my life whatsoever, you know, I'm vaping, I'm vaping my flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm vaping, yeah. you know, and, uh, that has been that has helped so much to where you get these cravings and you're just like I just especially when you live in a house with with kids and they're eating whatever crap they want to eat you know? yep. and uh, you're just like 
you bought the kids ice cream um oh, and that's gonna sit in the freezer and i'm gonna have to stare at it you know <laughs> <laughs> you know so but other than my training uh yeah that's 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 my main focus right now is training and uh keeping vaping alive absolutely how about you pixie what do you got coming up this week anything you're working on you know how's work gonna be for you this week work is work <laughs> i never know um i didn't know the farrier was coming today until nine o'clock last night so uh <laughs> Every, I expect every day to be an easy day today, and sometimes it is. Usually it is, but on the days it's not. It, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been looking at a whole bunch of new molds for my resin stuff. Um, trying to get people more variety. I've been doing a handful of the resin trays with matching grinders and absolutely loving how those are coming out. Um, I'm going to be doing some pictures this weekend to post up to the Facebook. Um, that's pretty much the place that you'll find me. Uh, Facebook.com backslash Chaos Pixie Creations. Beyond that, that's that's about it. That's De about it. Dealing with you, dealing with the yeah. kiddo. And... That's a full-time job in itself. Yeah. <laughs> All just, right. Just a little. Well, I guess that leaves me. Guys, you guys can look forward to the podcast again uh, next week. Big love to everybody for tuning in. Big love to Sam. Thank you so much again for being here, my friend. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's fun. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Sam. We try it's to good to it's good to middle. get to uh, just sit down and talk with someone in the industry that's really made an impact. Absolutely. And you know, like you know, Pixie mentioned, me and Chris have been uh, been fans, and we we follow we we follow your channel, we we watch your videos, and uh, much like what's happened with uh, guys like with like Grim Green or Matt Cully, you know, it's it's good to see you guys out there. That you're not you're not just taking the twisted messes fucking route. You guys are out there going, no, this is something we're passionate about. This is something we love, and we oh, need to do something anywhere. about. It. Yeah, and you're I'm also not, not good being... enough at video games to do twisted messes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, that's vaping with vaping with twisted four twenty. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Is that what you mean? Well, yeah, but he still does like some. He still does uh, vape reviews, but they're yeah. kind of second. They they've kind of taken a back seat. He's making his money on Twitch now and doing the video gaming and, yeah. you know. More power to him, but I, I don't have the skills in anything else, so I'm just going to keep doing yeah. this, plugging yeah. this horse and, until and, I can't plug it no more. Yeah, and, you, you uh, said twisted I'm, message. I'm, I'm, real, I'm really grateful for that. I'm really thankful to have guys like you, you know, and Matt Cully and, you know, Grim Green, those guys out there that are, you know, still saying we're not going anywhere. We're not just going to take our ball and go home. Mm -hmm. Like, we've yeah. already made, you know, I'll just go get a job and I, I, I mean, had my time, you know, or whatever. Even even if uh, there, I wasn't able to get new products sent to me anymore, which which isn't the case, obviously, where I am. I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. But even if uh, I was no longer to be able to get new products to review, I've got fucking just tons of shit. I'm a hoarder. I would just keep making back to the vape videos. It would just be flashbacks, um, how to build old RDAs. Mm -hmm. um, I just I just be making vape content still. That that's what I'd be doing. So um, yeah, that's awesome. Speaking of, you will have a product being shipped out tomorrow for you. Um, that oh yeah one yeah. that we talked about. Yes, that will be heading out tomorrow. I have another package I got to ship out too. So I have to go through my bits and bobs collection and add something to the package from Chaos Pixie Creations too. Oh okay. I have cool. no idea what because I know nothing about what you like or your favorite colors, but. I'm going to wing it. <laughs> She's going to do something. We're going to do something. We'll come up with it. But that's going to get out in the mail tomorrow. Anyways, uh, you guys can catch the podcast again next week, guys. Um, aside from that, you guys know where to follow me. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And uh, that's that's about it. If you're not part of the Discord, get into the Discord. Get involved with the community. Great place. we got a Zoom room. We go in. We hang out. We uh, do the whole nine. And uh, just great great people so 
Thank you all so much for listening. This has been the Cloudy Days Calm Nights podcast, and we all thank you so much, very, very much, for tuning in and for subscribing. Anyways, until next time, fam. Later. Peace. Cheers, dickheads. Bye.